This short program is to introduce you to the wonderful grass family, or the Poaceae. In the Poaceae, which is a monocot family, we of course have parallel veins in the leaves. However, each leaf is also divided into a sheath which wraps around the stem and a blade which extends from the sheath. The sheaths in the grass family are open, meaning that the edges do not fuse, as you can see in this picture here. In some other families, the edges of the sheath are fused together, so you have a cylinder surrounding the stem. But they are open in the grass family. There are some other optional features to the leaves in the grass family, such as the ligule. The ligule, shown here, is at the junction between the sheath and the blade. And the ligule is usually membranous, but it can also sometimes be of bristles. And it will have a characteristic size and shape, which is often useful in identifying a grass. Another optional feature is the one of having oracles. Oracles are tiny extensions that come off the top of the sheath. Now grasses are wind pollinated, and so their flowers are very reduced meaning they'll have very different structure from what we've been used to looking at flowers which are insect or animal pollinated. The inflorescences or grouping of flowers are quite varied in the grass family. Sometimes they will be very open and have many branches as in the wild oat here. Other times the entire inflorescence is compact and not branched so we say they're spike-like as in this barley. And sometimes the inflorescences can be quite small, as in this annual bluegrass, Poa annua. In any case, since they are wind pollinated, at some point when the flowers are actually flowering in the flowering state, you will see the three stamens dangling out of the inflorescence, three stamens per flower dangling out of the inflorescence and the feathery stigmas also hanging out so that they can catch the pollen as it drifts through the air. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about what a flower is and the other units of the inflorescence. A flower first in a grass will consist of three stamens and one pistil with a superior ovary in usually two feathery stigmas on the top of that pistil. There aren't any other flower parts except maybe some glands that help to open up uh, the structures so that the pistil, feathery stigmas of the pistil and the stamens can hang out, but basically it's the stamens and the pistil. However, the main unit of an inflorescence includes much more. It includes a lot of bracts or modified leaves. The basic unit of an inflorescence is called a spikelet. A spikelet will have two bracts called glooms, two glooms at the base, and then inside the glooms that are sort of wrapped around each other, you'll have one or more florets. Oh boy. A floret is a flower with two more bracts. Those bracts, however, are called the lemma and the palea. So the lemma and the palea surround the flower, that's a floret. Okay, let's review. A spikelet will always have two, well, almost always, have two glooms at the base and one or more florets. And a floret consists of a lemma and a palea and the actual flower. So here's one spikelet in the wild oat. And here's the spikelet opened up. This is actually past the flowering stage and it's going into fruit, but we have the two glooms which have been opened up a bit and within there we actually have two florets in this instance. And the long structure is called an awn. Awns can come from any of these parts. They can come from glooms or lemmas or paleas, usually not paleas, but they can. And the on in this case comes from the back of the lemma. So we have two ons, which means we have two florets, each with a lemma, surrounding a palea, surrounding a flower. That's really bad, but you can see it opened up a little bit more, just not in focus. Here's a younger stage floret from the wild oat again. 
And so we're just showing the lemma with the on coming off of the tip, actually it's off the back, excuse me, off the back of the lemma. Um, and then the palea has been sort of moved aside. But in its normal position, it's like the lemma wraps around as if you wrapped one hand around your other hand. Wraps around, doesn't completely unfold, but wraps around the smaller bract, the palea. And between those is where the actual flower is. It looks like you can see some remains of stamens in there, some green in there, but it's not very clear in there. Okay, let's review before going on. The basic unit of an inflorescence is a spikelet. A spikelet will have two glooms at its base and one or more florets. A floret consists of a lemma and a palea and inside them a flower, which generally consists of one pistil and three stamens. Okay. Now, going on to barley, which is in the genus Hordium, we have an unusual um, situation here where at each node or level on the stem in the inflorescence, we have three spikelets, three entire spikelets attached. Oh, yay, yay. Okay, let's take a look at one of these spikelets, fold off. So this would have been attached at the node, and a spikelet has to have two glooms normally and one or more florets. Well in Hordium we have only one floret per spikelet. One floret per spikelet. So here are our two glooms that actually belong to this green thing here. Here's the lemma which happens to have an on on it and it enfolds the palea and the actual flower. Then this right here and here. These are the two glooms that belong to this floret, lemma, palea, and flower. And then these two glooms belong to this floret. Notice the glooms themselves are very much on-like, which is also characteristic of uh, some of the species in this genus. And this is just a view, same thing. These are the three spikelets that would attach down here. You can't really see the way it's folded back. And here's one of the glooms from the barley. Notice it's not completely on like there's a little flat portion and th there's often uh, cilia or hairs off of the edges. But if you open up the floret, there's the lemma, there's the palea, and we can see the th some of the stamens that are a, a part of the flower. Going on to another grass, Bromus diandris or ripgut grass. Um, it's very rough and so it wouldn't be too good to swallow this grass. But it has a very open inflorescence and this is just one spikelet from the inflorescence. So notice we have a gloom and another gloom and in this case we have five to eight florets in the spikelet. So you can see one here, there's another one here, there's one here and one here, and it looks like there's probably one more there. If we look at one floret here, okay, one floret, meaning lemma, palea, and flower, we're seeing the back of the lemma here and the on actually comes from right between these two tips, the two forked tip of the lemma, which isn't always that easy to see, but there they are. Here's annual bluegrass, Poa annua, and uh, one way of recognizing this grass actually has to do with the leaves, sorry, the leaves, and if you look at the leaf here, it kind of looks like an upside down canoe, at least in this orientation of the slide, it looks upside down. That's called a prow tipped leaf blade. So it's that curved over portion that's kind of like the front of a boat. Um, that's good for recognizing the genus Poa. And the spikelets are quite small. I think we'll leave it at that for Poa. Quite small, there's a millimeter ruler. 
And one more grass that I want to introduce is a nice native bunch grass, Stipa pulchra or purple needle grass. Uh, it has a very open inflorescence, does have a purple hue to it, but we have a spikelet here that has only one floret, okay? And the awn, the long structure, is on the lemma. Now remember, the awns are not always on lemmas, but oftentimes they are. In the next picture, also of purple needle grass, bent things back so you can actually see the two blooms of the spikelet, one floret inside. So we have one lemma. Here's the awn attached at the top. And in the genus Stipa, we have what are called spindle-shaped lemmas, meaning they wrap around, um, so the two edges actually wrap around each other, and um, kind of like a well, like a spindle or maybe a mm, bowling pin. I don't know. <laughs> okay, but that's very characteristic of the genus. And lastly, kind of out of order, but this is from ripcut grass, and it's just another view so that you can see the lemma and folded inside it the palea, which is generally thinner, and beneath that palea. Uh, it looks like it were developing uh, a fruit already because this is going into seed. Well, hopefully that's been a not too painful introduction to some parts of the wonderful world of grasses.